This summer, I went on a road trip across Goku and Kyushu where I captured an incredible collection of photographs that I was really excited to share. Our goal was to explore Japan's lesser known gems and the experiences far exceeded our expectations. If you haven't seen the video yet, I highly recommend it, so go check it out. But today, I'd like to walk you through my entire editing workflow from the trip, hoping it might inspire or assist you in your own edits. I recently received the Logitech MX Creative Console, and I want to show you how efficient it can be, especially when editing large batches of photographs. The console is part of the MX ecosystem, so it works smoothly with my all-time favorite mouse, the MX Master 3, and the Logitech keyboard. The console comes with a set of two, the multi-action dial pad and the keypad with its nine customizable LCD keys and multiple page navigation. With Logi Options Plus, I can easily customize the console and assign any key to any button. Profiles can also be added depending on what app you use and the console views will seamlessly change depending on what app you're using. So. The console isn't just for when you're editing, but also when you're doing emails, opening AI Assist, other apps, or even controlling music. I can now also add music controls to the Lightroom profile. So now I can control the music while editing, which is a crucial part of editing for me. And music in general is a big part of content creation to stay inspired and come up with new ideas. So let's get into the edits and first things first, we do need to select the photos that we want to edit. Usually I'll have a star or I'll put stars on the ones that I want to edit and uh, I'll go from there. But also if I'm shooting with a model or a client or whatever, whoever it is, and they start the photo in the camera, I will also be able to see it uh, when I'm editing. So it's a good feature. I do love it and I usually go either one, three or five star depending on uh, what I'm using it for. Today I don't think I need it because we're focusing on one set of batches but uh, typically if I'm going through multiple stages of edit or if I'm trying to divide between uh, priority and less of a priority I'll go and star them in three ranks. So let's go ahead and just use the keypad the arrow key to scroll through the ones that I want to edit. So for example, this one seems good. I'll go and add it to the quick collection, which then I'll easily be able to find it here, which I always do. Uh, I think that's the best way in my opinion, uh, in order to keep things organized. So going through the photos, I would just click and send it off to the quick collection like this and we'll just do it for a lot of the photos a few just to make sure we have a good amount of selects to choose what to edit from so i'm just going through the photos quickly typically i'll spend more time selecting the photos okay so now that we have a few photos in the quick selection let's go ahead and uh see which one we want to edit. Let's go with this one and start editing. Now I have a lot of my presets saved on the, the keypad here. So I usually just go and see which one's the best fit. I think I'll go with probably this one and then we'll start editing from here. All right, so let's go with this preset for this photo. And the first step is to adjust the basic adjustment. First thing I do, bring up the exposure so we can see the photo a bit better. And then contrast, usually I don't touch it. Uh, highlights, I don't wanna be blown out, uh, especially for portraits, but uh, yeah, I think around there. Shadows, I'm gonna keep it at that. Uh, whites, blacks, maybe a bit crushed around there. And then the tint, I would go a little, a little green. I think that looks good. And then cool it down by a bit. Uh, I think around here works well. So I usually like to reference the 
original photo just so that I don't go far from how it looks naturally. So this looks too blue in my opinion. So I'm gonna go and bring the warmth back up a little. And then I think that supports a bit of the skin tone there. And yeah, for now, I think we can start from this. So now that we have that, we're gonna go and crop the image. Simply start cropping a little bit. I think it's pretty straight though, so not too worried. And then I'm gonna center the eyes. I usually use the grid as you can see uh, so that it kind of goes in the center of one of the eyes. This should be the center. Let's go into the masking because these walls reflect the light and I want to kind of emphasize that a lot more in this photo. So to do that we want to go and go into making a radio gradient a mask which is here and I think this mask can be a bit brighter in the shadows maybe in highlights and whites and exposure mainly and then bring the dehaze a little bit like that so it has that glow and then the clarity and textures down I think that looks good so all I'm gonna do is duplicate this so that I can uh, add it to the other areas of the photos. Okay, so now we've finished the masking. We're gonna check the before and after. I think it looks pretty good. It has that glow that I really want. So these corners and around the edges can be darker, which I can uh, achieve by using the linear gradient and dragging it from the corner like so. And of course, we want to darken it. So we can just use the dial and dial down the exposure. Maybe leave that there. And I'm going to subtract a brush tool. Just go over the places like this that I don't want the effect to take place. And all I have to do is create another one up here and dial the exposure down like that and yeah that looks good so again subtract these areas here and there we have it I think it looks good so far it looks the way I want it to look but the exposure I think we can push it a bit more like that much so we'll do that so if I do want to just edit the subject. I can also create a subject mask and dial the exposure a little bit. So that also helps with separating the subject from the background, but I think uh, do it only a tad bit because it looks very uh, unrealistic when you do it too much like that. It just looks like you cut out and pasted the uh, subject. So I usually do like one or two for the exposure. And yeah, it looks already good without it, but that's one way to go about uh, bringing the subject in more of like focus and creating contrast between the subject and background. But I think so far, uh, all I want to do is just bring down the grain a little bit. I think it's a bit too strong and that looks good. So. Yeah, all I have to do is just hit export and I'm good with the photo. So that pretty much wraps up my overall workflow. The MX Creative Console helps me with faster access to all the shortcuts and tools I often use, eliminating small actions such as dragging the cursor around and clicking multiple options. It seamlessly transitions between apps. So it also works when you're using Finder, Safari, or other commonly used apps. The tool we use can significantly impact on how we engage and create our work. And the dial and the keypad system makes you feel more engaged in the editing process. And besides eliminating small actions and making my workflow 
productive. The console also makes me feel more engaged in the process, which is probably the biggest takeaway. The MX Creative Console will retail at $199 and it comes with a three month free Adobe membership. But that's all for this video. I hope you can take away something from my editing workflow and like always, stay safe, stay curious, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.